Hello and welcome to the 2024 Southland Softball Season Previews. And I'm joined right now by our defending champions from McNeese State University, head coach James Landero and Mariana Torres. Coach, Mari, how are you doing today? Great to have you with us. Doing great. Uh, doing great. Uh, thanks for having us. Well, it's great to be able to get to chat with you guys. An unbelievable season last year, which we're going to touch on in just a couple of moments as we look towards the 2024 season. But coach, what's off season been like for you? How, how do you fill your months between, uh, between the end of last season and getting ready to start right now? Oh, man, I feel like that's a loaded question a little bit. You know, uh, uh, you know for, uh, for us, it's back to work. It's forget about last season the best we can, kind of evaluate it last season and try to really shape this team and try to feel what we're going to need to, you know, how evaluate what we need to do to be better. And, and that's been the focus on, on, you know, how can we play with rhythm? How can we get used to new teammates and, and press the restart, uh, restart button as best we can? And and so that that's what's been good. Uh, that I think our players done a good job. Uh, that this year, exceptional leadership, and you know, sitting to my right, right here with Mariana, she's done an exceptional job of really helping out that locker room and bringing young people along, and and uh, really took a lot of pressure off our coaching staff by the way that the leadership that we have in the locker room. And Marty, you know, coach has kind of led me in perfectly to my next question, which was to ask you all about your first year in Lake Charles last year. I know we're moving forward into twenty twenty four. Um, but how was the 2023 season for you? And and what was your experience like joining McNeese's team? Uh, it was incredible, honestly, a put short. But um, it just taught me a lot about community, taught me a lot about teamwork. Um, just, I know I've been playing softball for a long time, but it was just a different kind of team atmosphere, team chemistry, um, and just how much that makes a difference. Um, so honestly, it just taught me like a family away from family uh, as far as the, the community in Lake Charles um, playing for something bigger than ourselves. Um, it was just a really overall incredible experience just to be able to play with these girls um, that just bring so much passion to the game. Just kind of brought my love for the game back again in my first year. So I'm excited what this year brings. Well, that's awesome. Well, great to, great to have you with us here in the Southland Conference. And so obviously we know you were previously with AM and and transferring into McNeese. Um, what was the Southland experience like? What did you learn in your first year in the league about the Southland Conference and what softball is like? Honestly, just that every game is a dogfight. Uh, it's just competitive spirit, um, passion, like I said, just stood out to me the most. Um, no one kind of took a game for granted. So for us, that meant like coming out and competing to the best of our ability every single day, um, focusing on what we could do as a team. Um, it, that was just what it was. I mean, who could be the most consistent each day um, and bring the best out of each other uh, as far as team and then against uh, opponents. But um, the Southland Conference has been amazing, uh, just seeing all the camaraderie, uh, the competitive spirit. Um, it's just been an overall great experience for me. So I'm excited to be here and I'm thankful. And coach, I, I know you want to move on to 2024 and we'll get there in just one second. But I do have to just touch on, you know, what was a school record year for you guys with, with 47 wins last year? An unbelievable achievement. And obviously, we know how it finished and, and how we wanted it to continue. Um, but how do you take the memory of the experience in the NCAA tournament last year and apply that to this season and pushing forward towards repeating your goals? Yeah, you know, Callum, that's a really good question when you, when you start thinking about how do you use it? Because, you know, we, we do want to make sure that that team gets the respect that they deserve, you know, that they did great things for it. They put us on a, on a national stage. They had a quality season, beating some really good teams. Also, you know, the way they handle themselves, the professionalism. I think that's what we really try to build on is the way they handle themselves in the day-to-day -day actions. And I think that's the stuff that the public doesn't get to see. But, you know, for me, as a when, when you come as a coach and you enjoy going to your job every day, you look forward to practice because of the players and the energy they bring. And I think that's been the message is, hey, what did we do really well to get to that point? And we did a really good job of focusing on our process of what we do every day. And you're kind of seeing that echo with you know, Mariana and Chris and Marino kind of really echoing that. And, you know, Reese Rayner coming in doing the same thing as Ashley Vallejo and Bouvier coming in and, you know, Emily Phillips stepping up in that role. And those, those six right there have really done an excellent job of making sure that we stay focused on what can we do today to be really good and not focus too much on the end result. 
And obviously one of the losses that we have suffered from from last year to this year is is the great Whitney Tate uh, moving on and having to replace those innings that she pitched last year. So as a head coach, how do you think about the best way to do that? Obviously, Ashley Vallejo, who was also a standout, is still with you. But what's it going to take for the rest of your pitching staff to step up in, in Whitney's absence? Yeah, you know what Whitney did is so great. Obviously, she was a great staple of our program for a long time. And uh, it's how do we we change and how do we adapt? And, you know, one thing she did really well is, is her leadership. She passed those tools on to the staff that we have now. And she kind of, she helped that that staff really mesh last year. And I think she was able to pass on some wisdom. And I think Shailene Sanders is going to benefit from it greatly as well as, uh, you know, having Lindsay Davis come back from ACL surgery. She's been excellent with it, with, with passion and work ethic and which you see even passed on to the freshmen, you know, with Ashley stepping up and having that leadership role passed on to freshmen, you know, like Emma Banks and Ryan Sheck Snyder coming in this year as a sophomore, and then also seeing Lexi Dibley pitch. Um, what you're seeing is that leadership kind of getting passed along from what Whitney did. And now Ashley's kept stepping up and, and kind of preparing them. Hey, what does it take to get yourself ready to pitch? And, uh, you know, time will tell as far as inning goes. You know, the same thing as when Whitney was here and Ashley, I know they got predominant innings, but I thought Sanders had some quality innings for us last year. And so, you know, a, it, it all comes down to, you know, the ball is going to go where it deserves, whoever gives us the best opportunity to be successful. So I, th I think early in the season, we'll pitch as a staff early, and then we'll kind of let things kind of filter out on, you know, who plays bet, who puts us in the best position to be successful. And Marty, one change that has been made, obviously, is as seniors graduate, is the addition of a former teammate of yours to the coaching staff in Alea Seneca moving from in the dugout playing to in the dugout coaching. Um, what's that transition like? And is it good to still have Aleas around on the coaching staff? Yes, it's been great. Um, Aleas just brings a lot of knowledge to the game, a lot of passion. Um, I'm sure you guys saw it all over TV last year. She's just flying around the outfield, just doing whatever she can to help us win. So she's kind of doing the same thing as a coach, um, doing whatever she can. She's always willing to go out there and take extra reps with us, always willing to go in the cages, whatever she needs to do, she's always out there. So we're super thankful for her. Um, she's been a lot of help to our team this year. And as coach alluded to, you know, bringing in freshmen and you yourself kind of taking on a leadership role within this roster. What's that been like for you? And how, if anything, do you, how do you go about bringing in the freshmen into the team culture you've created there in Lake Charles? Um, honestly, I think we just emphasize everyone being themselves. Um, everyone's opinion is valued. Um, and so we've kind of taken that, translate that off the field and on the field. Um, everyone's talents and abilities are different. And what can we do to just put them all together? Um, that's something that, you know, as a freshman, you come in kind of intimidated, kind of nervous. You want to step up and do your job. But I think, like Coach Shane said earlier, it's all about the process, all about doing what you know you can do, um, staying in the present moment kind of thing. So that's just kind of, kind of something we've been reiterating to the freshmen. Um, they're super talented, super excited to see what they do this year. And, and lastly, I'm going to stay with you, Mari, for this one and then head back to coach to kind of riff off it. But the, the opportunity to play some really big teams this year, your schedule is loaded with power five opponents. And we're going to talk specifically about Oklahoma in a second. But the opportunity to do that, you've been in a power five environment before. How does that kind of resonate with this roster and the opportunity to really take on some of the biggest names in softball in this country? Honestly, we're just super excited. Um... I, like Coach James was saying earlier, I just enjoy coming to the field every day, whether it be practice, whether it be on my own with my teammates, just getting extra rep, uh, work in. Um, but I, we're just super excited. We don't really pay attention to who we're playing. We really focus on ourselves and what we can do. Um, like Coach James says all the time, you know, like who can get better faster? And that's kind of our mindset. So uh, we're excited because, I mean, any game is any anybody's game. So, you know, we're just going to go out there and do what we know what we can do best, um, play as a team, play for the community of Lake Charles, um, and just see what happens. But we're excited. And, Coach, obviously you built this schedule very deliberately, it seems, to test yourselves against some of the best teams in this country. Um, what does it mean to have the defending national champions, Oklahoma, coming to Lake Charles to play you guys twice? And what does that say about, Southland softball in general that teams want to challenge themselves and Southland teams want to play against the top teams in this country 
Yeah, you know, when you step back as a coach and all this on game day, it's about us playing the best softball we possibly can. But yes, you know, for, for our community to always turn on the TV and see teams play and actually be able to come and watch those teams live now, I'm excited for our community, our fan base. I'm hopefully, and I'm excited for our conference, right? You see our conference stepping up and challenging itself and being, you know, been in the conference a while, seeing the level keep growing and growing within the conference uh, makes us all better. I always tell our kids that competition is what, what drives you when you know you have to be at your best every single day. And that, for us, that's the excitement, right? You're going to play against some of the most talented athletes in the country. So that's what you train for. You train for those opportunities to be able to play those teams and see how you match up and did all my training pay off. And, you know, you know, for us being able to do it at home, for our fan base and and hopefully keeps growing the sport. We feel like the, the sport is growing at a rapid rate right now. And uh, hopefully it helps it grow it in our community where it could come and see uh, teams that you hear about that maybe they've never seen before, be able to come to Southwest Louisiana and um, hopefully makes for a great atmosphere as well. For our, our student athletes love to play in front of that kind of atmosphere. And you know, those atmospheres is what regional plays like, it's what postseason's like. So the more often we can put ourselves in that those situations, we're more prepared to make a run, hopefully at the end of the season this year. And I guess, you know, the the overall aim is to try and win the Southern Conference again and get back to the NCAA regionals and try and push on to the super regionals. What's it going to take from your team in terms of consistency and what they're going to have to put out on the field in order to be able to achieve those goals? Yeah, that, that's a great question, right? I, I think sometimes we overcomplicate that question. And for us, it's, it's, it's hey, what's our work level like? Because you said the key word, consistency. Like, that's what ultimately you got to put yourself in position to take advantage of opportunities to score runs, to get out of the innings. And how do you do that? You do it by being a consistent team that plays in the moment very well. And, and so when we play, and we saw that last year, we were able to play loose and play in the moment. We were a pretty good softball team. And that, so that's what we're trying to echo right now. You know, I think it's pretty simple. It's a very boring answer. We got to pitch it well. We got to play good defense. We got to find a ways to get on bags and get opportunities to advance and score runs. But uh, you know, and so we talk about these things of things that we're pretty good at that, that we had some success with last year it was, you know, good defensive play. Obviously, I, I, pitching was really good for us, and I, I feel like those things. That's where championship teams are built: is can we pitch well and play good defense. And uh, so, so that's always going to be our focus of making sure we take care of the ball. But for us, it's consistency. Awesome. And, and Mari, just lastly, take us inside the, the dugout for a little bit and, and, and maybe just give us a little bit chance to get to know uh, one or two of your teammates a little bit better. Obviously, there's plenty of time for celebrations and lots of opportunity to celebrate when you guys are performing well. Who's the best dancer in the team? Who's the one who's going to be able to get people going with a little bit of a dance in that dugout? So all of our, all of my teammates are amazing. I just want to say I love them. Um, but I definitely, the first one that comes to mind is Riley Eister, number seven. She's a spunk of joy. She's a spunk of energy. Um, honestly, she, she was mic'd up last year and it's probably the most cut like comedian type feel I've ever gotten from her. Um, but honestly, she just, she just is herself. Like she just, you know, is always trying to make people laugh like without even trying I guess that's I should reword that she unintentionally makes people laugh like enjoy the atmosphere so definitely Riley Eister um surprisingly she was quiet at first but freshman Lexi Dibley she's got a little humor to her um you don't really see it from the outside in but once you get to know her like she's she likes to play loose she likes to dance she's actually a pretty good singer um so yeah uh but everyone I mean everyone's great I mean they just we all love each other so much I think that's what makes going to, to going to the field every day so enjoyable I mean it's never like you know a hassle to go I mean it's just fun and we like to keep it loose for sure so definitely love our team chemistry um excited where that takes us this year well awesome Marty coach thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us we'll wish you nothing but the best in 2024 and we'll look forward to seeing you guys very shortly in action. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you. having us. As always, go folks.